Ever since Ruben Amarim emerged as the front runner for the Liverpool manager's position, a flurry of questions has swirled around. Is he going to bring his favoured 3 4 3 formation? Will Liverpool's signature heavy metal remain? Or will Amarim swap it out for his own brand of possession focused football? And which players will he decide to work with? Speaking of players, some of you thought about possibly selling Mo Salah, others talked about bringing in a fresh face for the defence. We even floated the idea of Trent Alexander Arnold making an exit in our last video, a suggestion that unsurprisingly didn't sit well with everyone. Yet, amidst all this speculation, Darwin Nunes' name seems to have flown under the radar. It's clear that Darwin has huge potential, and what we're seeing now is just the beginning. But what happens after Klopp? Or, in our case, what happens if Amarim arrives? Well, in today's video, we'll dive into how Ruben Amarim utilizes his striker this season, and how he's the perfect match to elevate the Uruguayan star to new heights. And here's a little spoiler. Amarim's strategy might not lean as heavily on possession as you'd think. So, don't forget to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's dive deep into the discussion. To grasp how Ruben Amarim might boost Darwin's game, it's crucial to review the forwards he's coached since he started at Sporting. And here's an interesting point. The forwards who have thrived under Amarim since 2020 weren't your typical number nines, so stick with us on this. In his very first full season, Amarim led Sporting to a championship victory, breaking the 19-year streak held by Benfica and FC Porto. Pedro Gonzalez was a key player, finishing the season as the top goalscorer in the league with 23 goals and 6 assists. But hold on to this four, Pedro isn't a traditional striker, he's more of a natural attacking midfielder or winger. The season after, Pablo Sarabia led Sporting in goals with 15 goals and 6 assists. Like Goncalves, Sarabia isn't your classic forward. Though he can play as a false 9, he's typically seen on the wings or behind the striker. In the 2022-23 season, Pedro again topped Sporting's scoring charts with 15 goals and 11 assists. This might lead you to wonder if Amory prefers not to rely on a conventional centre forward. But that's not entirely true. Six months into his sporting tenure, Amarim brought in Paulinho from Braga. Paulinho, a more traditional striker, has since netted 50 goals and provided 27 assists and 136 appearances. So how does this relate to Darwin, especially if Amarim's successful forwards have been wingers and midfielders? Well, what if we told you that he was forced to use his strikers that way? Here is out. Last season, buzz was everywhere that Amarim might leave sporting, especially with the club letting go of key players and not bringing in any replacements. Rumours were also floating around that Amarim was keen on signing a new striker, but the club's inability to do so forced him to adapt using players like Gonçalves, Sarabaya, and even Trinasau in a makeshift forward role. But then came the summer of 2023 and everything changed. Victor Giochires has been on everyone's lips this season, yet it was the previous year when he really burst onto the seat. Giochires nearly catapulted Coventry City into the English Premier League for the first time since 2001 with 22 goals and 12 assists. Unfortunately for him though, he was just one penalty away from achieving history as Luton Town came out victorious in the qualification playoffs. Still, the strikers' performances didn't go unnoticed, with numerous Premier League clubs showing interest. In the end, it was Sporting that snapped him up for a mere 20 million euros, a steal by all accounts. The Swedish striker has been nothing short of sensational, lighting up European stadiums with 36 goals and 15 assists in just 41 appearances this season. This performance has left many one wondering why Premier League clubs didn't secure his signature. Well, they tried, but Guillaquires, guided by his agent's advice, chose Sporting. He believed Amarim to be the ideal manager to foster his development at this pivotal stage, and that turned out to be true. So what did Amarim do to unlock Guillaquires' potential, and how will he replicate this success with Nunes? Well, let's dive deeper into that next. Sporting often creates scoring chances by creating spaces for attacks behind the defence. How? Well, we've broken down how he does this by keeping the ball moving around to the back with short, quick passes. To take advantage of the spaces, Amarim excels at coaching his forwards to make sharp and coordinated runs into the created spaces. This tactic lures opponents in, tempting them to press high and aggressively. In other words, Amarim likes to bait the press. When teams fall for this and press up, they leave behind huge gaps. Sporting's defenders and their midfield duo then look to send the ball through the gaps, either by finding their attacking midfielders with a sharp pass or launching it into the open space. This is where Guillaquires really comes into his own, using his speed and power to exploit these areas. Does that sound familiar? It should, because Darwin Nunes also excels in these kind of situations. Take a look at this chart showing how both players perform in terms of progressive runs and receiving long balls per 90 minutes. Their similarity is striking, not just in their play style, but also in their stats, like expected goals and assists. For another comparison, Guillaquires averages about 8.82 touches in the penalty area per game, while Darwin's not 
not far behind with 8.33. This highlights how crucial both are to their team's offensive efforts, something Amarim is bound to leverage if he ends up at Anfield. Looking at Guilherme's, his scoring rate in the Portuguese league is nearly on par with Darwin's last season there, with Guilherme at 0.88 goals per 90 minutes and Darwin at 1.18. This comparison should give Amarim confidence that he can bring out the best in Darwin too. Now let's go back to the tactic. Amarim's strategy of drawing in the opposition to open up spaces plays perfectly to Guilherme's strengths like his physicality, speed and smart pace attacking. This tactical approach puts him in prime positions to consistently exploit channels, a key reason behind his prolific scoring this season. And it's not just the goals. Guilherme is also setting up his teammates with remarkable frequency. Providing 15 assists is no small feat for a forward. Further testament to Amarim's skill in coaching his synchronized movements among his attacking players. When Guilherme gets the ball in space, he's not just a threat to score. He drives forward, exploiting the half spaces effectively, and if the shot isn't on, he's almost guaranteed to pick out a teammate with a pass. Let's show you some examples to understand how Amarim is benefiting from his striker's strengths. In Sporting's 5-1 thrashing of Estoril, Guilherme delivered a hat-trick of assists. One of these assists showcased his ability brilliantly, starting with his run into space and receiving pinpoint passes from his teammate. After shaking off the defender, Guilherme powered into the penalty area. At the same time, Edwards dashed towards the goal, ready to pounce. With the angle getting tighter and another defender closing in, Guilherme chose the perfect moment to deliver a cross that Edwards connected with kicking off the scoring. His second assist unfolded quite the same, but on the opposite side of the field. Now, how does all this relate to Darwin Nunes? Like Guilherme, Darwin excels when given space. He's not just a goal threat, he's also a creator, able to set up plays for his teammates. Darwin's knack for finding and exploiting channels has been evident since his Benfica days. He can navigate to either side of the field, delivering quality crosses with both feet. Let's take a closer look using the EFL Cup match against Fulham as an example, shall we? Even though the spaces were tighter than in Guilherme's scenarios, you can spot the similarities in how Darwin positions himself for a pass behind the defender, moving into the channel with intent. With just a single touch to control the ball, Darwin swiftly swung in across with his left foot, confident it would find the teammate, which it did as Cody Gakpo added the second goal for the Reds. It's quite uncommon to see a striker who's as effective in the centre as he is out on the wings, and that's a big part of what sets Darwin apart, and it shows. He's racked up 14 assists this season alone. Now, can you see where Darwin fits into the Portuguese's tactics? Amarim may lean towards a possession-based game, but it doesn't mean that he wants to tick attacker his way to the opponent's net. His teams work the ball around, especially among defenders, shaking off their markers to pierce through the first line of press. But after breaking through, it's all about swift, direct play rather than endless midfield circulation. Given Darwin Nunes' prowess in such transition play, Amarim is sure to make the most of the Uruguayan's talents up front. Now away from the tactics, there's another factor that Amarim has that will almost definitely help Darwin get to the next level. So here is out. Amarim isn't just a tactical genius. His charisma, both on the sidelines and in the press rooms, is well documented, with plenty of clips showcasing his shithousery and combative spirit during matches. Darwin Nunes shares this kind of fighting spirit and tenacity on the pitch. There's no doubt that Amarim will appreciate and connect with the Uruguayan's fiery nature. This bond could be key in elevating Darwin's game, especially in addressing one of his noted challenges, his temperament. Our dedicated analysis on Darwin Nunes, which we advise you give a watch, reveals that Darwin missed opportunities aren't due to lack of technical skill. Instead, they stem from a mental block, as he often opts for power over placement from any position. With Amarim's exceptional track record in player management, he's likely to build upon the foundations laid by Jurgen Klopp, further developing Darwin's mental game. Guys, you might question his tactics or his CV, but there's no one thing guaranteed. If Ruben makes his way to Anfield, Liverpool would be transitioning from one master of man management to another. There's no denying Darwin's potential to rank among the world's deadliest forwards. Under Klopp's guidance, we've already seen signs of improvement this season, and there's every reason to believe he'd level up even further with Klopp. But would a change in management stifle his progress? Absolutely not. Amarim with his blend of tactical prowess and personal touch could be the ideal match for Darwin. And now to the part where we hear your thoughts. Will Darwin Nunes reach new heights under Amarim at Anfield, or is there another manager whose style might be better suited to the Uruguayan? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button for daily Liverpool deep dives. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.